Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We are in our fifth and final episode in this third and final series on PEDs, with the exception of we may do one kind of feature length uh, epilogue to this where we really get into how you can put this information together. But in this episode, we're going to finish up with diuretics. So we've gone through all of the the non-androgenic type compounds and, and finally here, um, you know, it's time to get on stage. And of course, Adam, I'm going to see if I can say this uh, laughing out loud. Um, you know, you have to get quote dry. And so, uh, of course, a lot of people still have remaining body fat and they think a diuretic is going to take care of that. So assuming people are actually lean enough and they truly have some kind of water retention due to anabolics, are there different diuretics that work and that are helpful or are they just all counterproductive? I personally think unless you're holding like my, my personal theory is if you're holding from an anabolic, why are you on it leading into that week anyhow? So my, my goal would be to hormonally limit the water as much as possible. And if you're good at what you do, you're able to do that. I think what people forget is people originally likely use these diuretics for weigh-ins mm. when you're having a hard dang time making weight it, it's something that can be utilized and i think people just got caught up on the scale being lighter is good and that's me and you know that that's not the case so i think maybe to make a way in but it's definitely something that is not going to make you look better and i think that you know some people swear by using a half a diazide making them tighter but you're drawing the water out of everything like you're never even though it's a half a diazide it's not just going to affect under the skin it's going to affect it in the muscle tissue and no one has been able to come to me to a valid argument aside from they're like, I swear I, I see it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what you're not seeing is the muscles shrinking too. And I just, yeah. you know, someone proved me wrong. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've done even side-by-side -side comparisons of IFBB competitors who are obviously losing 12, 15, sometimes 20 pounds in the last week or two with diuretics. And you look at them side by side and uh, I, I also make the argument that they look better fuller because th uh, what they're losing is a lot of water volume in the muscle cells. And you and I both know that through carb and mineral manipulation and just consistency through peak week, you can get as tight as you need to be under your skin and you can still maintain all that muscle fullness. You can get the best of both worlds with water. You can't get that mm -hmm. without water. Right. My, my only thing is maybe if somebody's too big and so like what division is that? And typically, you know, maybe bikini, but I have very few girls who are too big for that division, you know, and it's just, it's one of those things I really don't use. It's definitely overused in the sport. It, it's certainly killing people. That's, that's what like I was going to get to. Is. Yeah. I, I, really, I, I wanted to get to that point, Adam. And that is, if anybody's interested in what we just said about peaking properly and being able to maintain, even achieve better tightness than ever and still be full, go back to all of our series on peak week type stuff. But right now in the environment we're in, I mean, we've talked this year or last year about a particular coach who's already killed half a dozen of his own clients. And, and it's, it's the combination of a few different things, but the sledgehammer that does this is the low blood pressure uh, you, you know, by the time you get somebody into this, this, you know, dieted state, they're already kind of exhausted. They're under a lot of stress physiologically, probably doing things like clen and T3. So their heart rate is already extremely high. Then you drop their blood pressure down to next to nothing because you've completely dehydrated them, which is the first nail in the coffin. And then you do a diuretic to deplete them even further then the third is your, these are the same people who will completely eliminate sodium and jack up potassium, which pulls out even more sodium from, from muscle tissue, including your cardiac muscle. And even if you're 20 years old and healthy as can be, boom, your heart stops, you're dead. It's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's a sure way not to win your show, you know, yes. to, to and, die uh, on stage. Good point. Yeah. And that's why I, I don't really mess with these. They're, they're used in the wrong context all the time. And uh, I would just be very leery if anyone's coach is suggesting that stuff. They, they let, usually let, let, let me, don't have an eye yet. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me play devil's advocate against myself and see what you think, Adam. Let's say somebody is keeping their sodium and potassium levels normal. So they're following a peak week protocol that you and I would approve. They're staying very well hydrated. And so by the use of the right progressions of carbohydrate, sodium, water, all of that, everything is exactly how you would state what you would approve. But then they also say, how about just a little bit? I mean, I'm going to keep drinking water, Adam. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep everything fine and healthy, but would this just help me maybe get a higher rate of water turnover or is that all it's doing and you still get no real visible effect? Well, the problem is it's like taking a, a dump truck and putting your salt and water in there and just emptying it. So now you'll be constantly drinking all the time. Now we're constantly monitoring your mineral level. Like you're probably going to get sodium flat really quickly. <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to have a hard time keeping you tight because now you're working through that so much quicker, depending on the diuretic, whether it be potassium or sodium sparing, but you know, you need sodium and potassium together. I'm going to have a hard time keeping you tight in the event of that. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my point is I think I, I don't want to give um, diuretics just all of the blame for people dying. It is the dehydration. It is the sodium and potassium manipulation that sets the stage and, and truly the water depletion is what brings blood, you know, pressure down so far, but then the diuretics just kind of accelerate that process. So even if that's being taken care of, you're saying even in that, that, that hyper hydrotic state, you're, you're still just now turning over minerals so fast that it's just going to make it almost too chaotic and it's still doing you no good. Yeah. And believe me, people go pro doing this, but they probably would have gone pro anyhow, had it not been for this. All right, Adam, again, you're the man. I mean, you're, you're, you came through with a ton of great information, uh, filling in complete and utter gaps in my knowledge when it comes to this, this side of the sport, but I am looking forward to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk about this off camera. We're going to try and get together for a feature, maybe with a guest or two and really have a round table about for people who are interested how to do this safely. One of the things that Adam keeps talking about is minimum effective dose being responsible, keeping your eye on long-term health, making sure you stay aligned with your goals originally, you know, getting into the sport and so forth and not carried away with just extreme things before you even know what's happening to you. So hopefully we're going to get somebody in here to talk about who's actually gone through that entire process and can bring some wisdom as well as knowledge to this. So uh, we'll look for that guys. And again, Adam, thanks. And we'll see everybody next time in Contest Prep University.